We all make choices about alcohol. Kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Yeah, have fun. Hey, Em. Remind me about that party again. And adults Alex make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations, and they want honest answers in everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. Would you like to work closer to home, save money on gas, and be rewarded for your hard work and attendance? Then Belicio Foods is looking for you. That's right, Belicio Foods is now hiring for multiple positions and shifts with great employee benefits, an on-site health clinic, competitive wages, and advancement opportunities. Belicio Foods is a company that truly values their employees. Apply online at Beliciofoods.com slash careers. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of The Morning Show right here on Main Street TV. Of course, Jennifer here to start off your morning with her good friend, Jeremiah Schaefer, in the house, and we are going to do something really special today. We are, Jen. We're going to do something a little fun today since we're getting down to the final days in the year here, Jen. Can you believe it? We're going to be closing out 2022. You know, I, I started here at Total Media in February, and here it is December and it has just flown. Yeah, by. like almost a year already. That is that is crazy to me how fast the year has gone. But uh, anyway, what we have something. Hey, time flies when you're having fun, it right? It does, <laughs> and it's been it's been great. It's been great to work at Total Media and uh, with all the staff here. But as everybody has been super friendly and nice, and uh, it's been great to work underneath uh, Pete and his management and it's just the staff's great and it's a great company to work for it is and uh we have a lot of fun along the way too and and uh that makes it great to to be able to come into work every day but so you are a man about town you know if if there's something going on jeremiah is pretty much out on the scene a lot of times here you've you've called in live and and reported in uh got yourself in some hairy situations you know standing out in the middle of main street or or whatever (laughs) um but you so you kind of planned something fun today for the show i did so so each year for the last several years i've gone back through all my facebook videos that i put out on social media yeah and i always make a list for my viewership to show what the i call it my top 10 most viewed facebook videos from whatever year so this year's 2022 yes and uh I, i already have that list together and it, I haven't published it yet. I'm going to publish it here in a couple of days when we get closer to the end of the year. Okay. But I figured I'd go ahead and come on the show and we would go over those, start out with 10 and work our way to one. And Love it. This is based on maybe not particularly my picks for maybe the best um, video of the year or something like that, but based on what uh, you as the viewers um, watched. So this is like your top hit videos. Yeah. And, you know, we want to very carefully say that these are not necessarily our favorite stories because many of them are, let's just be honest, tragic or or not not the best uh, story. But these would be the ones that you as the viewers watched watched the most. most. Yes. So uh, we'll go ahead and show uh, the, the first one here. We'll show number 10. So, Jen. All right, explain that one. That one was kind of hard to hear, or kind of hard to hear. That one was taking place during the Jackson County Fair earlier this year, back in July. And the uh, Jackson County Fair Board was honoring Aaron Daly. Yes. Now, you may remember um, Daly said uh, said farewell after dedicating 18 years to the Jackson County 4-H program. She's been around a while. She had been around for a while. And um, she she took 
She took a position in neighbor. She didn't go too far. No. Um, she's, she's still around. And she's my neighbor, so I still get to see her all the get, time. Well, good. You still get to see her and her family. Um, and she's still out in the community. I've seen her out and about. But she's taken a position. Uh, it's basically the same position in neighboring Gaia County. And uh, they, the video you saw there, uh, that video got um, 6,900 views. Wow. And uh, that was the fair board honoring and recognizing daily for all of her dedication to the 4-H program. That's right. And uh, that was during the livestock sale, so that's why it was kind of hard to hear. I probably <laughs> should have. I, I forgot to check the audio on that. But um, she, we, we did a in-depth story with her when she said her said her goodbye, and uh, that's still available to read. You can check that out on the telegramnews.com. That's it's right. It's in our archives. You can look it up. Um, but Maddie, Maddie Allman um, replaced her, and uh-huh. I think you guys had her in yeah, on the show was in, earlier yeah. in the year. And, Not too uh, long ago. I actually got to meet her during the Jackson Apple Festival. She was working the booth. Mm-hmm. Super, super cute. Super friendly. Yep, and, super sweet. Yeah, sweet. And uh, Got was, some big shoes to fill, though. She does. She does. But yes. uh, I think her and um, Josh, is it Winters, mm-hmm. um, he's the new ag agent out there, will mm-hmm. do a great job for that program. So I'm looking forward to uh, working with them. But uh, that was number 10. So uh, we'll go on to number nine. All right, so for uh, for anybody that's just now jumping on, um, good evening. My name is Jeremiah Shaver, multimedia journalist for The Telegram. I am coming to you live here along Portsmouth Street in downtown Jackson where a truck has collided with a structure. Um, as you can see, the structure has, uh, has significant damage to it. But uh, somebody had asked, uh, two vehicles hit the structure. No, just the just the truck is what hit the structure. The car was parked was parked here in the drive. Um, Jackson Police Department is on scene, and uh, they're they're investigating. If you, uh, I don't know if they're gonna keep the road out here closed. But this is uh, right up, right up the street from Cardo's here in Jackson. But I will be uh, I will be following up with uh, the Jackson Police Department to learn more on uh, what happened here on this uh, incident. Miko takes her hundred months. She comes here. She takes her hundred months. For some reason, something told me to
Now that was a crazy, crazy story. That that was Jen. So that that happened on a quiet uh, Sunday night. <laughs> I, I remember I was I was at home uh, I was outside uh-huh. and I heard a bunch of sirens so I turned the scanner on to listen to see what was going on and that's when I found out that this truck had slammed into the structure mm-hmm. on Portsmouth Street here in town how uh, fast how fast are you going that you do that much damage man he wiped out the complete side of that building he and did. um and hit that other car that was in the that other car was setting in the driveway so people thought there yes. was two cars involved yes. which there kind of was but that one wasn't moving but no and thank goodness i know a little bit of the side story of that uh the car that was sitting there that was hit um the the girl i think works in that building she and did, she did yes. she was in the building said she typically has her child yes. there with her so Luckily, she was in the back of the building at the time, and luckily, the child was not, was not there. there with her. Yes. So, while that was not a good scene, uh, it could have been much worse. Yeah, that, that was uh, so. That was number nine. Uh, had seven thousand four hundred views. And it happened in June, and it was a it was a quiet, quiet Sunday. I had pulled the video here, uh, Pete Telegram editor Pete Wilson actually uh, wrote the story. I had showed up and then did the video uh-huh. and um the in, the individual uh, it said the driver of the pickup truck who was allegedly uh, driving under the influence of alcohol yes was injured but the like you said the young woman inside the same room where the truck slammed into was not injured it says um you well know, that'd wake you up wouldn't it i i tell you what i can't imagine <laughs> standing in my house and a truck comes slamming oh, through the goodness. corner of the house like that but the person involved, uh, this happened on Sunday, June 12th, and the person that was driving the 2015 Dodge Ram pickup truck, uh, his name was Ernie L. Tisdale, and at the time he was 44 years old of Jackson, and um, there was some other information that talked about um, him having charges of OB, OBI and failure to control. I had to look this up in the court system yeah. because we didn't have any follow-up. That's what I was wondering to about this that. This morning, and according to the Jackson County uh, Muni Court, yeah. it says that the there's going to be a pre-trial January 18th, 2023. Okay. And a jury trial is set for February 17th, 2023. Starting at eight thirty a.m. So he still hasn't. Uh, so he still hasn't been sentenced. Um, so that's why I said allegedly because he's. We're still going through the uh, allegedly under the influence. Oh my! So still going through the court system there on that one. Yep. So okay, that was number nine. So we'll move on to number eight. Alright, so the hello and good afternoon. My name is Jeremiah Shaver and I'm a multimedia journalist with the Telegram. Broadcasting live real quick down here along Chillicothe Street in the city of Jackson. That's Jackson, Ohio for those outside of this local area. Um, we'll give you a real quick update on what I know about what happened down here. Um, the Jackson Fire Chief Dave Channel filled me in on what happened. He said at 1.56 p.m. today, Tuesday, March 15th, uh, the fire department got a call for a, um, a fire down here at a local uh, business. It's called Dunaway's Motorsports. Uh, they, by the time they got here, I guess the fire uh, was out, but there was a, a, a male, a 31-year-old male, that uh, had severe burns and ended up being uh, flown by medical helicopter um, to the hospital. Uh, the, I do know uh, Dave said that the state fire marshal's office has been called in to investigate the scene out here. And uh, 
that's about the extent of my knowledge. I will say that the uh, Jackson Police Department was here, the Jackson Fire Department, Liberty Township Volunteer Fire Department was here as well, uh, as well as Med Flight. So uh, everything out here is uh, out. Uh, the fire is out at this time. Um, like I said, there was a 31-year-old male who um, worked here that had severe burns. Not sure where out on his body, but they uh, had to call a medical helicopter in to have him flown. Um, so all the all the action out here is over with at this time, and uh, everybody's kind of clearing the scene. I think uh, Dave Channel, who's the fire chief here, was kind of waiting on the uh, state fire marshal's office to come in. Um, Dave said you can you can see inside that there was definitely a fire um, of some kind to take place. He says he's not sure how the fire started, um, but he did say that the, the state fire marshal would be coming in to do an investigation here at this business. So that's a little bit about that. I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. Uh, reporting for the Telegram on the TelegramNews.com. I'm Jeremiah Shaver. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there you have it. Um, that was number eight coming in at um, that had eight thousand three hundred views on it. Happened in March of twenty twenty two. Very unfortunate. Uh, yeah, that was fire. Uh, somebody very injured in that. They did fire. Um, I have a little little. It was a thirty one year old male taken yep. by helicopter to Columbus. Uh, back March 2022, earlier this year, and it was it, he received severe burns from an explosion. Yeah, and we we later after I shot this video, I later found out that um, that individual was transferring. I think they were transferring gasoline from like one can to the other. Yeah, something somehow, weird happened. Yeah, somehow there was like a uh, like a spark or yep. something. I think that happened that caused the explosion out there. Finally, you know, luckily very nobody scary. was. Yeah, it was very scary. Luckily, nobody like died or anything like that. Um, yeah, here it was. Um, the Ohio Ohio State Fire Marshal's office was called in for that one and determined that the fire was actually an explosion. First, it occurred when gasoline was being transferred from one container to another, and a spark ignited the vapors. Mm -hmm. And it said the force of the explosion. Busted out several of the glass mm -hmm. um, garage doors in that building there, and uh, it was boarded up for a period of time. And uh, they're you know they're back open and in business. And sure. I've seen the thirty one, the thirty one year old man. Um, I've, his name was Mikey Aldridge of Oak Hill. I've seen him out and about, mm -hmm. and uh, he seems to be doing okay. I don't Good. know like the extent of that, but uh, that was at um, Dunaway Motorsports Garage, and uh, that's here in Jackson. Yep, right here so in that, Jackson. So that was number eight. And we will move on to <laughs> number seven. <laughs> One of the most infamous videos. Hello and good morning. My name is Jeremiah Shaver and I'm a multimedia journalist with The Telegram. I'm broadcasting live here off of Burlington Road. I am outside of Holzer Medical Center in Jackson uh, where I'm giving you guys an update this morning. Uh, local authorities are searching for an individual um, in this side of town that they uh, consider to be armed and dangerous. dangerous. Um, that individual's name is Kenneth Sims. And uh, right now we've got a helicopter flying over the hospital out here at Holzer. And uh, the hospital is in lockdown at this moment. So um, if you're coming out, uh, be aware of that. Um, we can, we can show, you the, uh, show you the hospital again here. You can see uh, security at the, at the front gate there. Um, I talked to one of the individuals. They said that they are in lockdown um, as a precaution uh, regarding the situation that is happening out here in the area. Earlier this morning, um, not too long after 6 a.m., um, Jackson City School Superintendent 
uh, Phil Howard put the school district on a two hour delay. And uh, he said that it was due to an individual um, being loose on foot. And uh, I, I, I don't know if he was seen in this area and that's why they're searching this area. Um, helicopters coming across again. Let me see if I can, well, you can see here um, as individuals are coming to the hospital uh, they are, and this this is in Jackson, Jackson, Ohio, um, at the Holzer Medical Center, Jackson, but it's in lockdown. But I will say that on my way down here, I saw a, um, looks like Wellston PD was blocking off, was blocking off the exit to Jackson High School. And uh, also, I can see the Jackson County Sheriff's Office, um, kind of behind behind holes are here there may be more vehicles back there but i've i've not ventured back that way yet because i wanted to go live to give you guys an update but uh we'll I'll peek my head around here when i was coming down the hill i did notice that the exit to the high school is uh, blocked off but for anybody that's just joining um, it's a uh, we got a manhunt um, here in the city of Jackson that's Jackson Ohio uh, they're looking for an individual that's considered armed and dangerous his name is Kenneth C Sims it's middle initial C and uh, we got got a police copter circle in the area and uh, got law enforcement out here. So I don't know if they uh, expect him to be in this wooded area on this side of town or what. I will say that uh, I spoke with my editor prior to going live. He was working to get more information. I'm gonna move back around to the front of the hospital here, away from the woods, just, uh, just to stay safe hate for this individual to like come out of the woods while I'm broadcasting live that wouldn't be any good good footage for you guys but not good for me if he's armed and dangerous so we're gonna come back around to the front of the hospital here I'm being told by authorities the suspect that was at large Kenneth Sims is in custody they have um, they have captured Sims in this, uh, this this wooded area behind the hospital. I guess there's kind of like a field, um, kind of a field here. Um, but we got we got law enforcement from JPD out here, the Jackson Police Department. You got the Jackson County Sheriff's Office, you got the Wilson Police Department, and you have the Oak Hill. The Oak Hill Police Department was here as well. Um, so it's been a real real team effort out here. Oh, oh here. Here come some folks out of the woods. Here he is.
So there you go. Um, there is Kenneth Sims. Uh, law enforcement are walking him into Holzer Medical Center to the ER. Um, I'm guessing he probably, uh, he, he was just in shorts, didn't have a shirt, no shoes. So uh, with him being in that wooded area, I'm going to say he was, was probably cut up and beat up pretty bad. Hello and good morning. My name is Jeremiah Shaver. I'm a multimedia journalist for The Telegram. I'm still broadcasting live out here at Holzer Medical Center in Jackson, where um, local authorities have taken a suspect at large into custody. I have Jackson Police Chief Brent Hinch here with me. He's going to step into the frame and we're going to talk a little bit about this morning, a little bit about the individual and kind of find out what happened for you guys that have been asking. Hello, I'm Chief Hinch with the Jackson Police Department. Uh, this morning around 3 a.m., uh, one of the patrolmen from the Jackson Police Department uh, initiated a traffic stop on a male subject uh, driving down Main Street. Uh, she had previously watched a minor traffic infraction and littering from the motor vehicle. Uh, so she initiated the traffic stop and made contact with the driver, uh, Kenneth Sims, out of Michigan. Uh, Mr. Sims was shown to not have a valid driver's license at the time, um, and she made the stop. She called for some backup officers as he had thrown a uh, blunt of marijuana out onto the ground right near the officer. Um, so she called. We had a backup unit from Jackson County Sheriff's Office. A deputy showed up and uh, a trooper from Ohio State Highway Patrol. Um, Mr. Sims was out of the vehicle, standing around while she searched the vehicle. In the trunk she located a large jar of marijuana, I don't know the weight, but it was, it looks like more than personal use, uh, and a loaded 9mm handgun. Uh, Mr. Sims is currently on parole and uh, in, in taking him into custody on, on that issue for further investigation, she was able to get one handcuff on Mr. Sims and then he spun, uh, pulled away from the officers and took off running. He ran through Jackson. Um, the officer gave chase, the a trooper gave chase while the deputy held down the scene with the stopped vehicle and the patrol units that were there. Uh, Mr. Sims have eventually made it into a heavily wooded area that we had a, we were able to secure a perimeter as more and more people were activated to respond to this scenario. Um, Mr. Sims was, was within the perimeter from State Route 139 to Burlington Road, Holzer Hospital to Jackson High School which prompted uh, me this morning to talk to the superintendent of Jackson City Schools, Phil Howard. We were in contact and he initially put the schools on a two hour delay as we tried to seek out this individual. Um, he later in, in contact with me, we still didn't have him in custody. We had him in sight with uh, OSP's aviation unit who had been called to assist. Uh, they were able to view uh, Kenneth Sims in the heavy brush. We had multiple officers. I had six officers that were finishing their last day of SWAT school today. I called their SWAT commander and said my guys are going to be late because I need all hands on deck today. So I had six additional units coming in. Um, I called our canine in. We have recently certified canine in tracking. Uh, Jackson County Sheriff's Office had units out. Oak Hill PD uh, had a unit out and had brought a drone to assist with the aviation unit. Wellston PD sent some officers uh, at Jackson County Municipal Court probation. This was an all hands on deck kind of situation. So Mr. Sims was continuously trying to evade arrest uh, in a heavily wooded area uh, inside that perimeter that I previously mentioned. And uh, was uh, we were getting constant reports from the aviation unit uh, that he's bedded down, that he's, he's going through some thick brush. They were able to see him and not see him using some of the technology that they have available Obviously, there were several OSP units as well. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. Uh, that was really the game changer for us. They were able to give accurate location while the units closed in in this search area that's roughly about a square mile. Um, and Mr. Sims was taken into custody finally uh, somewhere around 8, a little after 8 this morning. Traffic stop was at 3 a.m. Five hours later, he's in custody. Um, Currently being checked out at Holzer Hospital, Mr. Sims has been running through thick brush with thorns and sticks and bugs and he's barefoot and without a shirt at the time that he was taken into custody. So he's being seen at Holzer Medical Center here for just the minor cuts and scrapes as you can imagine that he would encounter trying to crawl through the woods and, and run through the woods at the time. 
Uh, no use of force had to be used to take Mr. Sims into custody. Uh, we're going to review with the prosecutor today on charges stemming from this as we further investigate. So uh, everybody is safe now. Unfortunately, Jackson's at the city schools. We weren't able to take them into custody before they had to make the final call to cancel school. But we appreciate really uh, this was an all hands on deck, and I mean that. Every agency within the county uh, had some representation and assisted us in uh, capturing Mr. Sims safely. Uh, the mayor and the service director from the city of Jackson were uh, lending nothing but support of all city services should we need it. Uh, we actually canceled some of those that were coming in to help track through the woods. Um, so the big shout out to everybody in, in Jackson that works in this field. Uh, this is what we do. This is what we do to keep our community safe. And uh, we feel like we've done that today and, and, and done that really without incident. We've caused quite a stir. I'm aware of that, but for now, there are no other suspects at, at large. There's nobody else who's who we feel is dangerous out in the community uh, related to this incident. So everybody's safe, and that makes us a, it makes a happy day for us. So there you have it. Kenneth quite a, Sims Day. Ken, Kenneth Sims Day, causing quite a stir there, Jim. Quite a stir, and uh, I think uh, Chief Hench put that very well, yes. He did. It was definitely quite a stir for the morning, and if you remember, we were just talking about that off while the video was playing. It was Friday the 13th. It was. Uh, kids got out of school. They did. So we dubbed it Kenneth Sims Day. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that manhunt. Um, so that, that there was three videos that I kind of montaged together there. Mm -hmm. I, I did a total of three videos reporting on Kenneth Sims. There was an initial one when there was the, you know, the bolo where they were looking for him. And then yeah, you had, you were out and about, I mean, you were at different locations because no one really knew what was going right. on. We didn't really have a, you know, we knew that they were looking for this individual. We didn't know the extent of what happened prior to him, you know, fleeing from authorities. Or at that point fled. we thought he was armed. Yeah. And we thought he was armed and dangerous at that point. And uh, so we, you know, I did an initial video there at um, Holzer because I had learned that they were, um, like locking the hospital down and uh -huh. I wanted people to be aware. Plus you had the helicopter flying around and there was yep. a law enforcement press out there. So I was, I was suspicious that maybe he was in that area. Yes. And as I, um, they, they had a nice perimeter set around, uh, that area because I went over to, um, 139 on the backside yes. and they had a folks sitting over there on a property on that side of the field. Well, too, the ironic so. thing is, I mean, you know, people were like, why are they closing the school? Whatever. I mean, if you think about it, he wasn't that far wasn't from the too school. Far. Yeah, no, that's, he was down over the ways there yeah. from where the school is. But that, that video came in at number seven. And, um, there was three videos that I had done. Each one got over 8,000 views. Wow. Uh, the one, the main one would have been the one where I got lucky and happened to get back in time to get footage of them actually bringing him out in handcuffs out of the woods. Yeah. That, uh, that crazy. video got 8,700 views and uh, all this happened in May of 2022. Um, has had, it been that long already? Yeah, it, it has been that long. And so uh, whatever became of Kenneth Sims, he, so it's, it's interesting. There's been, we've had some different coverage since this has happened. Okay. I know at one point, like he was requesting a different attorney or a judge and different stuff. Um, when the manhunt originally happened, I forgot to mention this, but it was a five and a half hour search Jen, wow. that they were out there trying to track him down. Yeah. But I, I just wanted to mention that real quick, but the Kenneth, Kenneth C. Sims, he was from Michigan mm -hmm. and, um, you know, he got pulled over here and I think, I think the chief capped all that really good. But the last, the last I printed off the sheet from the Jackson County common police court. This was filed the latest information here. I don't think we've reported on this yet. Um, as of this was filed December 5th and it says this matter came before the court for a pretrial hearing on Thursday, December 1st. Okay. It says present before the court was the prosecutor and, um, another attorney. I'm going to guess was, you know, his attorney. Mm -hmm. It says the defendant was not present. Okay. It says the state requests that this matter be stayed until such time the defendant becomes available to the state of Ohio. And the court has granted this matter to be stayed. And I think when they say, say stayed, I think that means that this case has been continued until 
So is, is he incarcerated somewhere else is kind I, of what that sounds like? I don't know if he is in jail somewhere else or going through a case somewhere else or if he's just out and about. I don't know. Huh. Interesting. So um, I'm going to check with uh, you know, Telegram assistant editor Phil Buffington, associate editor Philip Buffington, because he deals with a lot of this court stuff. Yes, he does. And uh, maybe he can find out uh, where... Uh, Mr. Sims is, since okay. it says that he's not available to the state right now. It's kind of strange. That makes it seem like he's available to another state. Maybe. <laughs> so I, Maybe. I know he did have you know some incidents in other states, because I know when I looked up the name, he did pop up in some other news articles okay. in the past. So, well, a, a, it's interesting. An adventure that day, nonetheless. Sure was. Sure was. It was Woo. an interesting, interesting adventure. So we'll move on to number six. All right, I might have to do this video real quick because it's starting to sprinkle a little bit and I want my equipment to get wet. Um, hello and good morning. My name is Jeremiah Shaver. I'm a multimedia journalist with the Telegram. Uh, got a call about a collision involving a vehicle uh, in McDonald's here in Jackson. Um, for those that have been coming through, may have seen the police setting out here. I uh, kind of want to give you guys a little update on what's going on. Um, there was a Chrysler 200 that uh, sideswiped uh, the McDonald's and the drive through back here. Um, you can see the Chrysler 200 sitting right here. It's the silver one in color. The uh, uh, tow truck's here to pick it up. Um, I'm going to guess they'll be uh, taking it to the impound lot. Um, the Jackson Police Department was here on scene. And uh, I can tell you that they took a male individual into uh, custody. Uh, we're taking him back to the station to, um, I guess, do like testing. Uh, I, I was told by the officer on scene here, I'm gonna follow up later, that uh, when they were uh, talking to these individuals, I guess there was some uh, suspected um, Xanax pills in the vehicle. And uh, so they, they expect the driver who was this male individual was um, you know, under the influence of OVI. And uh, so he was taken, taken into custody and they'll be taking him in to the station to do uh, testing. And uh, I will be following up. Uh, with the Jackson Police Department or my editor Pete Wilson will be following up. I wanted to go live here at McDonald's in Jackson, Ohio to just kind of <laughs> give you guys an update on what's going on out here. If you've been driving by and seeing some police activity out here in the side lot next to the drive through where the McDonald's is. Um, the McDonald's building, very minor damage, if any damage. Um, went and took a look at the uh, scene back there and uh, all you could see was um, like a tire mark on the side of the building, maybe some scratches to the brick. Um, the car, uh, the car has a flat tire on the driver's side, and you can see some scratches to the paint. Uh, pretty much just jumping on. Real quick wrap up because it's starting to rain out here in Jackson. Um, real quick, uh, there was a call, uh, Chrysler 200 here had crashed or sideswiped uh, the McDonald's here in Jackson, Ohio. Uh, the vehicle then pulled into a sparking spot. Jackson Police Department showed up, began doing the process of interviewing them. Uh, they brought the, there was two individuals, there was a male and a female. The male uh, was a driver. He was uh, detained by um, the Jackson Police Department, taken back to the station. I guess they were gonna do uh, testing there. And um, anyway, uh, what led to them detaining that male individual was there was um, Xanax pills in plain sight in the vehicle. And uh, so they expect uh, OVI is uh, what is expected or suspected. And um, I will be following up with them to learn more about this uh, individual. And uh, that's about it about the, about the scenario out here. So uh, I'll go ahead and sign off. Uh, reporting for the Telegram on the telegramnews.com. I'm Jeremiah Shaver. 
well, the worst thing in the world would be somebody to wreck the McDonald's, right? That is right. I'm sure uh, Mr. Munn would, would, would not be happy if that would happen. <laughs> yeah, that would. that's not a good call to get as, as the owner of an establishment. Especially the initial call. Um, when it came across scanner traffic, um, the call was a car had gone into the structure. Oh. So that's why I rushed down there. And when I got down there, I just found a beat up car and a tire mark on the drive through well, and the then, you know, it was interesting because you said, I didn't really think it was a story, but then they went and then they found the pills and, yes. and the, all of that. A little so, bit of a crime story there. Yeah. That, that happened in uh, July of this year. Video had 9,500 views. Um, did have a little bit of a follow up. That The person involved was Troy A. Cash. Uh, at the time, he was 21 of Jackson. He was taken in custody because of where those pills were observed sure. in plain sight there. He was later released from custody, but was facing some charges and had appeared through the court system for his initial appearing. He was set, um, you know, given a bond, uh, um, mm -hmm. an attorney, etc. cetera. Um, there was some follow up on that. I looked up just because I don't think we've done any follow up since. Yeah, I sometimes on these, when you do these, sometimes the wheels of justice uh, turn slowly. They do. But um, on September 2nd, uh, Cash pled guilty to disorderly conduct so that the other charge, which was the higher charge of OVI, drugs, and alcohol, would be dismissed. Okay. So he pled, I guess, to a, to a lower charge to have the other one dismissed. But in exchange for that, um, he had to pay court costs, fees, etc. He has 60 months of probation, 40 months of treatment as a condition of the probation. Okay. And he has to do five years of probation. Of reporting for the probation. Okay. So I guess oh, that he's got to kind of he's got to get things turned around. Yeah. I guess it sounds like that's right. So uh, moving on to number five. In an effort to make sure no students go without some basic needs such as food, the Wilson City School District has started implementing something to help. Last year, Wilson City Schools Food Service Director Tina King had applied for a grant with No Kid Hungry through affiliate Children's Hunger Alliance. In fall 2021, the Wilson City Schools received word that they had been awarded a $30,000 grant. King took that grant, which was geared towards feeding children in need, and opened a food pantry at the Wellston Middle School. I'm Tina King. I'm Food Service Supervisor here at Wellston City Schools. My name is Brandi Cuff. I'm the principal here at Wellston Middle School. Okay, so tell us about this room we're in. We have decided to complete a pantry here at Wellston Middle School with clothing, as you can see, and all the foods. We have Children's Hungry Alliance with the No Kid Hungry Act has helped us with a grant. Um, we've got a lot of donated foods and all of the clothing is donated clothing, some new, some gently used. We use it, um, down here is the girls' clothing and upstairs we have a boys' pantry called the boys' clothing. Um, we graciously uh, purchased the refrigerator with the grant Brandy has helped us with the room, the, the areas that we've needed. We have students help. I'll let Brandy tell more a little bit about that, but um, we're trying to keep it going and keeping all the students in need. So we have expanded the, we'll call it the rocket shop here at Wellston Middle School. Um, it was an effort that started on our second floor um, in really two small, smaller closets. Um, so with, uh, with lots of help, uh, with lots of donations um, and uh, lots of generous resources brought to us, we have expanded this, this area uh, into, like Tina said, uh, our clothing, uh, our coats, our shoes, uh, toiletries, school supplies, food items, non-perishable and perishable, which will be available to our kids. Um, so we are really excited about these opportunities and uh, very excited for the leadership uh, that is behind all these efforts. Uh, Tina uh, being a prime force, uh, also Susie Gearing uh, in our world of work and uh, the students within. Uh, Club Kindness has also been uh, a leader in terms of our pantries and our closets, so they will continue uh, to work the area. And uh, in some cases, students will be paid for that. So we're very excited to be able to offer this to our kids. 
Children's Hunger Alliance School and Summer Nutrition Manager Thomas Ben visited the middle school on Tuesday, March 15th to see the new food pantry in action. Ben was impressed by the pantry but noted that maintaining it into the future would be the challenge. King is hoping that the community will help with donations of food. She told the Telegram that some local businesses are also signing up to donate to the pantry and she plans on looking into other grant opportunities. That's a good one. That, that's a good one. Uh, so it's not all not all uh, death and crash and destruction. Yes. There's a few uh, nice videos in, in mm-hmm. the top 10, and this was one of them. Uh, happened in April of 2022, and it had 9,700 views, and this was the uh, rocket shop at Wilson Middle yep. School. Such a good idea. It is a good idea, yep. and um, kind of spearheading that was Wilson City Schools Food Service Director Tina King, and uh, thanks to grants that she was able to get through No Kid Hungry, through affiliate Children's Hunger Alliance, they were able to um, be able to get a grant to do that closet there. And the kids can come and go, and if they, you know, say it's a Friday and they're going into a weekend and they know that, you know, well, I need something to eat yeah. because, you know, maybe they're in a situation where they don't have access to food, you know, because a lot of this, there's a bunch of kids that rely on that, on the school lunch, yes. you know, as like one of their main meals yes. of the day. So this gives them an opportunity to be able to go in and um, maybe grab a few things of cereal or sure. you know, some different stuff like that. It's and wonderful. there's also personal hygiene stuff there as well. And they also have, um, there's closets that also have like clothing if they need like yes. clothes or shoes or whatever. But uh, Wilson, Wilson doing it up right there yep. uh, with that. Love that one. So uh, move on to number four. Now, so we'll go ahead and get started. Good afternoon. My name is Jeremiah Shaver. I'm a multimedia journalist for The Telegram. I'm currently broadcasting live out here along Beaver Pike near Hammertown Road, where there has been a single um, vehicle rollover crash. Um, you may hear some noise in the background. Uh, that's a MedFlight helicopter landing. Um, I believe the helicopter that's landing that makes either the second or third helicopter to land uh, since I've arrived out here on the scene. Um, they're saying that it is a serious crash. I will say that on the scanner information that I did hear on my way out, um, I did hear officials say that it was a single vehicle rollover crash and that uh, someone was um, ejected and that there was uh, entrapment as well. So the vehicle must be off the roadway over um, an embankment. Uh, don't have any names or description of the vehicle at this time. So that was an unfortunate that's incident. A, that's a sad one um, yes. here in the top 10, Jen. Um, this was a deadly crash that happened in March of this year. Uh, this video, uh, it's just, just me talking, but uh, just letting people know that they couldn't come out Beaver Pike because they're, uh, we didn't know at the time, but later learned it was a fatality. Mm-hmm. Um Young lady lost her life. Long, long, yes, young, young lady. Yes, she was um, 17 years old of Jackson. Um, she passed away at the scene. Mm-hmm. And um, there was two juveniles that were also involved in this. Um, they uh, sustained serious injuries, but they later had a little, um, uh, I don't think you'd call it, like a little a little event with those folks. Yeah. And and a party's not, a, not the yeah, right not, word. Not a, not a party. Um, I was thinking celebration, but that's not either. Yeah. But they had a little, little um, like, event law enforcement did out in that um, part of the county with those yes. individuals. And with they the had, like, the canine there. Mm-hmm. And um, our very own Red Thompson Jr. covered that story. And it was just a nice uh, little follow-up piece to yeah. that. But... Um, that was that was that was a sad story. Um, yeah, you know, it had uh, ten thousand views on that one. Okay, but uh, there there was a picture. I don't know if uh, we can. We we didn't. We published this picture. This was the car that was involved. It was a um, two thousand three Buick Century, and uh, it was traveling there on Beaver Pike when it drove off the right side of the roadway, struck a co- cur- culvert. And then overturned into a creek. And uh, the individual driving that 
was a uh, Jessica Crabtree. She, at the time, she was 28 of Jackson, sustained serious injuries as well, and had to be flown to the hospital. But I know there was at least two or three helicopters that landed out there at Liberty's Liberty Township Fire Department. Well, and, you know, you as a journalist have to be, you know, very careful about not showing that car. You know, you don't want to show the car, and you don't want to right. show you know, those things because family hasn't been notified. Right. And, um, you know, so good job. With I was that. very, yeah, very respectful with that one because I, I kind of figured that it was a fatality yeah. and, uh, was very cautious on how I did it, but I, I still wanted to go live at the scene and just inform people it's going to be a while yeah. before you can come this way. So the, yeah, cause it was around the time, if I remember it was late afternoon and, uh, figured people would be getting off work yep. and didn't want them getting stuck in traffic because they were right. turning traffic around. So anyhow, uh, moving on to number three. Hello and good afternoon. My name is Jeremiah Shaver. I'm a multimedia journalist for The Telegram. I am broadcasting live here along State Route 32 in Benton County where a 18-wheeler has smashed through the guardrail, gone over an embankment and down um, almost into Raccoon Creek here uh, in between these two bridges here. Um, I am on State Route 32, I'm currently standing in the eastbound lane. Um, the eastbound and westbound lanes are down to uh, one lane at this time between uh, it's Ar Arbach Road and uh, Eaton Mill Road here in Benton County. I'm not, if I said those wrong, I apologize. I'm not as familiar with uh, Benton County as I am Jackson County because I don't come up this way too often. But I uh, wanted to go live and show you the scene out here, let you know that there are some lane restrictions. Uh, emergency responders are out here. Uh, the individual that was driving this semi has been flown by helicopter. Uh, this crash happened uh, just before uh, 2.30 p.m. today, which is Thursday, June 30th, and this is Vinton County, Ohio, and Southern Ohio is where this uh, crash has taken place. Uh, not something you see uh, terribly too often or that I can recall seeing that often. Um, ODOT is out here, the High State Highway Patrol is out here. Um, Angles Garage has their big wrecker out here currently. Um, but right now they have uh, lane restrictions in the eastbound and westbound lanes of uh, State Route 32. I am between Wellston and uh, Albany is where I am. And uh, roads, to be a little more closer, it's um, Ar Arbol Road and um, Oh, what was the other one? I said it once and now I done forgot. But uh, just know we're between Wellston and Albany and right now the, there's no um, no closures at this time, just uh, lane, lane restrictions out here. Um, down to one lane here on the bridge where uh, this crash has taken place in between. Um, as far as uh, like the name of the individual involved, uh, I haven't been provided that yet, um, or you know what happened for him to go off the road or anything like that uh, has not been released. Um, from where I'm standing, I can see that he did smash through the guardrail, kind of go over the hill, and uh, almost landed in Raccoon Creek here. And uh, we're not too far from Arbol Road here in Benton County, so. We'll flip it back around because we got some more folks on that maybe didn't see at the start of the scene. Walk a little cr closer and give you guys a view. Give you guys a view of the scene out here. So as you can see, I'm kind of standing on this bridge here. Uh, be uh, this is you can see it's gone between the bridges out here and smashed through the guardrail. Um, this is on State Route 32 uh, between Albany and Wellston. Ohio. We're in Benton County, Ohio. We'll walk a little bit closer here and see if you guys can see a little better here. But 
as you can see, it's uh, smashed through a guardrail across the way. And uh, gone through through the guardrail and over over the embankment, almost into uh, Raccoon Creek here. So you can see, you can see here's the creek. And wow! So there's a crash, another crash, another crash video there, Jen. After the last one, um, so this came in at number three and had eleven thousand views. That was definitely a sight to behold. You yeah, know, that, that was an interesting crash. I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect when I went to this one. Yeah, um, I remember it was a hot afternoon. I remember calling Pete and saying, "Hey, there's a crash. I'm gonna go check it out." And uh, I didn't realize how far up 32 it was. Yeah. It was actually in Benton County. I thought it was still in the Jackson County. But uh, the gentleman driving the semi there uh, was um, Timothy Reese, and he was 66 of Cheshire. And he drove off the left side of the roadway into the median. The rig struck a guardrail, a bridge abutment, and traveled, as you can see in the video footage there, over that embankment. before they, The report said before coming to the rest in the creek, Raccoon Creek. Yeah. But I th there was still some space between that cab and the creek that... It wasn't like let's go with creek. creek bed creek bed. We'll say that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I was informed later that uh, Mr. Reese did pass away at the age of 66 on July 20th at Holzer Medical Center. Um, the crash happened on June 30th. So I don't know if um, like he passed away due to maybe complications yeah. or if it was just natural. That's, that's it didn't wild. say in the report, you know, obviously, because. Um, it happened later, mm -hmm. but it didn't say in the obituary whether it was related to the crash or not. Okay. But I would like to note mm -hmm. that um, the, the gentleman did end up passing away later. Okay. Well, that's I, it was just kind of just kind of strange that it was not too long after this incident. Mm -hmm. So, anyhow, number two. Forty seventy Jackson SO. Forty seventy, go ahead. Forty seventy is five one four three. It's been a good one. Forty seventy, you are officially five one at fifteen thirty two. For thirty one years, dispatcher Peggy Howe has been talking over this microphone. It's been an honor and pleasure to work with Jackson County's finest, building countless non emergency and emergency calls ranging from loud music calls to civil disputes to countless NBCs and structure buyers. From first shift to third shift to overtime and holidays, her hard work and dedication has never went unnoticed. Dispatcher Howe has been the unknown voice in the dark. It is now time for her to hang up her headset and enjoy the next part of her adventure. Thank you, Peggy, for your dedication to this office and this community. Happy retirement, Peg. 485, 470, congratulations. We'll miss you. Clear 4005. Thanks, Jackson County, for 31 years. So that one, that one for me, um, when I watched it back, I said it, it kind of pulls at those heartstrings. Oh my gosh, that's a tearjerker for is. sure. It is. So that was, um, that was Peggy Howe, and uh, she retired from being the. Uh, she was the Jackson County, um, let me see here. I don't want to get it wrong. She'll, she'll come and get me here. The dispatch she supervisor. Was, yes, dispatch yeah. supervisor. And she uh, retired after three decades. Been there a couple of years, right, yeah, Peggy? Yeah, been there, <laughs> been there a while. But that was uh, one of the one of the good videos, uh, I would say. You know, the, you know, the good and the bad. Of course, yeah. You get to see, you know, and, and that does kind of tear at the heartstrings, but such a bittersweet uh, sign off there. It does. Yeah. She she began her career as a dispatcher uh, March 25th of 1991. Wow. And then uh, later, I think she became became the supervisor. But after after the, her sign off there, we there's a this video. There's more to it. OK. Where I interview her and she kind of talks about something that stuck out in her mind um, that she always remembered. So you can go and watch that. It's available for playback. Play, playback. Playback. Me. But that video uh, was back from March of 2022. 
and it had 12,000 views. Wow. And you can see why there. It really, really pulls at those heartstrings. Yes, it sure so, does. So uh, we'll move on so to sweet. number one. Number one. Hello and good morning. My name is Jeremiah Shaver and I'm a multimedia journalist with The Telegram. You're watching a escort uh, of local um, EMS, police, fire, uh, bringing uh, the late uh, Ryan Foster home. So uh, that's that's number one there, Jen. Yeah. Um, just happened. Uh, that happened. Pretty fresh, isn't it? it? Yes, pretty yeah. fresh. Happened uh, would have been December sixth is when we filmed that one. And what you saw there that was a uh, escort vehicle escort for the late Ryan Foster. Mm -hmm. um, he was uh, laid to rest um, on would have been December 9th. Is that right? Okay. No, Some, something around, around there. 10th, maybe. 10th. I feel like it was the 10th. Saturday, December 10th. Yeah, I think yeah. it was December 10th. I think it was December 10th. Yeah. I think the funeral, oh, no, visitation hours, I think, was on the 9th. And then they had the uh, the funeral on Saturday, so that would have been the 10th, December 10th. Yeah. But, um, True he, testament to, to how much people cared for Ryan yes. and, and what he meant to people. And uh, I was driving to Columbus that day and um I remember I I had just gotten north of Chillicothe and I saw the lights coming this way as they they hit the the um they picked up the escort there south of Columbus and and uh drove him home so yes. it was I'm sure I knew what it was what was going on because we had reported on it, but I'm sure people driving down the road were like, What on earth is, is it the president? Or, right. yeah. or what? But I had sent a, a James a thing and I was like, Man, this is it's beautiful, but it sucks. Yes, this it this does. is suck yeah. sucks real it, bad. It was very, very sad. Um it was a Ryan, beautiful testament to to you know, him. Yeah. Yes. Um Ryan Ryan Michael Foster, um passed away, age thirty five. He was from Oak Hill. It was unexpected. Jim. Yeah. Um, was. He, I guess he had a medical emergency the day before and then passed uh, sometime um, in the early morning hours, I guess, the following yeah. day. It's not fair. It, it is not. It's not fair. But um, his, his obituary said he was a devoted and loving husband and father. Yep. And um, he, you know, a lot of people knew him through, you know, the he was the supervisor, I think, supervisor mm -hmm. for a station there in Oak Hill for the EMS. And uh, there was he was also a firefighter. Wore so quite a lot of hats. Wore a lot of hats. Yep. Um, well, well known in the community, and um, you can see why that video came in. Even though it was here at the end of the year, came in at number one. With the uh, last check I had was over thirteen thousand wow. views of them mm -hmm. bringing him home. And that that video was shot there on Chilcothy Pike, and uh, they made their way up Main Street. Um, there's a, another video that uh, Telegram associate editor Philip. Phil Buffleting did shot um, across from the courthouse mm -hmm. and you can see people standing out front of the courthouse. Um, it's a very nice video too. You can watch it. This is all, all available on the telegram news.com. So that's kind of a rundown of my, uh, my top 10 most viewed Facebook videos from 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have a playlist available on my Facebook page that you can go through and watch these. So, okay. Just something fun to do and, something to show and kind of look back on the year it is it's, it's interesting to reflect some good some bad some very tragic some happy you just that's the news it and is. and uh it's the nature of the beast and and some things are fun to report and others not so not fun so yep. but uh thank you for what you do you know good getting out and about and uh, being there on the scene of so many of these stories to let folks know what's going on in our community and um that's wonderful so you do a great job jeremiah thank you thank you jim thank you for having me on and give me the of opportunity uh, to talk about these videos like i was telling you when we were watching one of the videos there's been a lot of videos videos that I've done that, um, you know, I put a lot of work into and mean a lot 
baby that didn't get a lot of views, but <laughs> there's been a lot of news this year as there you look been. back. And yeah. um, I'm, I'm sure, I, I don't know if uh, the Telegram does this year, but there was something that I always did um, when I worked elsewhere. And that was um, kind of a year interview type thing. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's something maybe if we have the time we can maybe look into. That would be great as well. So, so. well, thank you so much, Jeremiah. This was a, a great idea. And um, you can look forward to this week more of the best of some of our morning shows right here on Main Street TV. So um, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And we'll see you back here tomorrow. This just in. The Telegram News has a new website. TheTelegramNews.com. Same dedicated coverage. Same trustworthy news with a brand new look. Covering Jackson and Benton County and surrounding areas. Locally owned and operated, TheTelegramNews.com has its finger on the pulse of the community. Stay up to date on local events, high school sports, and breaking news. TheTelegramNews.com. Subscribe today at TheTelegramNews.com. Check it out.